Yes, I am still alive. At least I think so anyway. I know it's been a little while, but don't worry, I am back now and I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. What's cracking, everybody, and welcome back, because it has now been over a week since the last video on this channel. Now, that is the longest break that we've had between videos in quite a while, and is going to be the longest break that we have for quite a while after this. And we'll get to just why all of that happened towards the end of this video, so if you are curious, then hang in for that. But if you really just don't care and you're just here for the Kraken news, then no hard feelings. The break actually had nothing to do with the Kraken, even though we are now back into a pretty slow news cycle in the offseason with the Kraken. With that having been said though, there still has been some news surrounding the Kraken in the last week, or honestly going on two weeks now. And certainly the biggest piece of news in that time frame has to do with their second overall pick in the entry draft in Matty Beneers who has decided to join his fellow teammates who were also drafted this year and going back to Michigan University to play one more year of college hockey. Now, although some of us may have had our hopes up that Beneers would sign with the Kraken before the season so that he would be available for them if he was ready early on, it wasn't terribly surprising news that he is headed back to Michigan especially after we learned that Owen Power, his Michigan teammate who was the first overall pick to the Buffalo Sabres, had made the decision himself to go back to Michigan. Of course, we knew even going into the draft that there was a decent chance that Beneers would be going back and that he, Owen Power, and their teammate Kent Johnson, who was picked fourth overall by the Columbus Blue Jackets, had been talking to each other throughout the whole process about whether or not they all wanted to return as a group or sign with the respective teams they were drafted by. But, of course, they have all decided to go back to Michigan and will be joined by the fifth overall pick in Luke Hughes. And, as far as I'm concerned, well, I am excited to see Beneers eventually play in Seattle and the Kraken certainly could use all the help that they can get up forward, especially down the middle where Beneers plays. I think that this is probably the right decision in the long run. For one, they definitely have a pretty good shot at winning that national championship, especially considering, once again, they do have four of the top five picks in this last draft all playing on the same collegiate team. Plus, for what it's worth, there's no guarantees that Beneers would have started right out of the gate for the Kraken anyway. So now he does get that one more year of seasoning at the collegiate level, so he'll be even more ready when he does come to Seattle. Plus, for all of these guys, now they'll know for sure, regardless of whether or not they end up winning the national championship, what they were going to be able to do with one more year as a group in Michigan. Which I think is probably better than if they had all split up this year, gone their separate ways to their pro teams, and kind of had it in the back of their head of what could have or would have been had they gone back for that one more season. So as a Kraken fan who otherwise doesn't really care all that much about Michigan hockey in particular, is it a little disappointing that we will have to wait a little bit longer to see Beneers? Sure, but again, it's probably for the best, and I wish these guys all the best in this last season with Michigan. And my last thought on this Beneers situation is that while I haven't necessarily seen it with him and the Kraken, we have seen some takes regarding Owen Power that him returning to Michigan rather than going to the Sabres is more a statement of the fact that he doesn't want to play for Buffalo and how much of a mess that organization is right now, more than him wanting to return to Michigan, which personally I think is a bunch of bullcrap. Again, one more season at Michigan won't hurt anything, plus, especially with his other two teammates who were also drafted returning to Michigan as well, I think it's pretty clear that this is something these guys just want to do. Moving on though, in the last couple of days, the Kraken have also made two more free agent signings in goaltender Antoine Bebo, as well as defenseman Gustav Olofsson. Now, neither one of these is likely to make a huge impact, if at all, at the NHL level, as both are signed to one-year, two-way deals worth $750,000. This is definitely just a couple of depth signings for the organization and nothing much more, but still I thought it was worth mentioning. The two are 27 and 26 years old respectively, both being former picks of the 2013 entry draft, with Bebo being a Leafs pick from the 6th round and Olofsson being a Minnesota Wild pick from the 2nd round. Both have some NHL experience but not a ton and really haven't done much at the NHL level, so 
Again, I wouldn't hold my breath to see them in Seattle playing for the Kraken. Aside from player announcements, the Kraken did also announce and release signups for their The Depths Club. Now, if you have season tickets, you probably already got the email and probably have already responded to it, notifying you that you do get a free pass to sign up for The Depths Club. If you don't have season tickets, then it does cost $90 to become a part of the club. As far as what being a part of this club gets you, well, at least so far, if you are signed up by August 29th, it will get you a chance to be randomly selected to be one of 3,000 fans that will be able to pre-order jerseys before the rest of the public has a chance to buy them, which does mean you're guaranteed to get one on September 15th. It'll also get you priority access to, quote, ongoing single game ticket releases for Kraken home games. You'll receive a special members only gift by mail, as well as receiving annual gifts as long as you stay a part of the club, special access to training camp events and team practices, which I imagine would also be at the Kraken Community Iceplex, members only events with Kraken players and coaches, as well as exclusive access or at least first access to special behind the scenes videos, like one they have advertised with Brandon Tanev mic'd up seeing Climate Pledge Arena for the first time, as well as some Hockey 101 type videos with their analytics department, which, while they aren't made by me, I'm sure are still fantastic anyway. And also a few other things. So there is quite a bit there, and it does seem like they've left the door wide open to continue to add things as time goes on. Whether or not it's worth it or not for you to get, I'm going to leave that up to you. If you aren't necessarily so much into collecting merch and you aren't necessarily directly from the Seattle area where you can easily get to some of these exclusive events, it might not be as worth it. But if you are into those things, it does seem like a pretty cool thing to be a part of. And speaking of being a part of things, EA also recently released the preview as well as the cover for their NHL 22 game. Now, this did get a lot of people up in arms a fairly significant amount because for the second time in three years, Austin Matthews is on the cover of the game, which not a lot of people outside of Toronto were a huge fan of. But as far as Kraken fans are concerned, for the first time we not only got to see a look at what the Seattle arena is going to look like in-game, but also see what Kraken jerseys and the team playing on ice will look like, which was pretty cool to see. And fortunately for me, I didn't buy NHL 20, so I don't have to worry about having two EA games with Austin Matthews on the cover. I can just get this first one with the Kraken in it. And finally, the last somewhat Kraken related thing that we got to see recently was the first look at Aiden Hill's goalie helmet paint job. Now, you might remember that Aiden Hill got traded to San Jose before Seattle could pick him in the entry draft where a lot of people thought he would be the pick from Arizona, myself included. But why this is relevant to the Kraken now that he's in San Jose and not in Seattle is because on the back of his helmet there was a little bit of a nod to the fact that he will have a new rivalry with a new team in Seattle. To me this little jab on the back of his helmet does seem like a bit of a bold choice coming from a first time starting goaltender for a team who let's just say has had a rough go of it over the last couple of years but it's still good to be recognized. But that aside, that does pretty much wrap up all the Kraken related news that we have to talk about in this one. So if you do just come here for that, then I hope to see you next time and stay safe out there. Otherwise, I do want to talk about just for a second, some more channel related stuff and why the break that we had over the last week plus. First of all, it hasn't even been three months yet since we hit a thousand subscribers on this channel and now we're already over two and a quarter thousand. Now, compared to some of the other channels you might watch, that's not a whole ton just yet, but I do want to say a sincere thank you to everyone who has joined and stuck with this channel to this point so far. Again, this last over week break that we've had is an abnormal thing for this channel and will continue to be going forward. So again, thank you very much for sticking with me through that and don't worry, it will be a long time before we have another week-long plus break if I have anything to do with it. As for some things that we have planned for the channel between now and the start of the season, obviously there's going to be continued coverage of any big crack in news that happens between now and then, as well as more NHL 101 videos if you're a part of that crowd, and I do also plan to do at least one live stream between now and the start of the season as kind of a general Q&A. So if you're a new fan and have questions about hockey, feel free to jump in for that. 
as well as if you just have general questions about what my thoughts are on the upcoming season. Again, I'm not exactly sure when that's going to be, but I will be sure to announce a date for that once I have picked one. But at least for now, I'm aiming for somewhere probably late September-ish, but again, I'll announce it here on the channel as well as on Twitter if you follow me there. I'm also working on the first not Kraken or even hockey specific video that this channel has seen in almost nine months now, which I'm pretty excited for and I think is going to turn out pretty well, so hopefully you're as excited for that coming up as I am. But if not, don't worry, this is still going to be a Kraken and hockey first channel for the foreseeable future. And finally, as far as pre-NHL season announcements are concerned, I'm also working on a couple of more community-oriented things, including a Discord, so for those of you who are regulars to the channel, if you are looking for a more let's say, controlled or maybe organized environment to talk. I will be getting that set up and hopefully out again sometime, probably mid to late September. But now, before I close out this video, I do want to address real quick, for those of you who have stuck around, why I was gone for over a week and really for most of that time not even working on videos. Now, if you follow me on Twitter, you probably already know where this is going, but... In order to really show you what was going on, I've got to go get something real quick. I was gone because I was busy welcoming the newest little Kraken fan to the world. This is our little little baby boy who is here just in time for the start of the Kraken season. Yes. Yes. So, that's the reason for the break. Um... He's still a lot of work, as any of you who are parents will probably know, but yeah. With that, from me and our newest Kraken fan, thank you very much for joining us for this one. If you've made it to this point, thank you very much for watching. If you did like or enjoy this video, there are buttons for that kind of stuff down below. And until next time, stay safe out there and be good to each other. And of course, go Kraken.